Let me know when you're ready, Mark. Couple of my videos and shit. Doing a lot yeah, of shit. Been working. Man. Been working. So, Spaz, for some of the new people that I guess are just introduced to you, or maybe they just seen your name on the internet and they trying to, and they just now seeing your face, what you got to say to them? Uh, shit. Stay tuned, bro. I'm a real active nigga. Real fucking lit. I stay on bullshit. Not bullshit in a bad way though. Like good bullshit though. But like, nigga just like to have fun on. I like I like good vibes, like fuck all that that lame boring shit. And we finna we finna tee the fuck up regardless. But shit, just really just stay in tune, bro. I got a lot of shit coming. I got tapes on the way. Video, hella videos in the works. I got shit with candy coming. Matter of fact, let me just shut up. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna keep spilling too much. But I mean let's I wanna reflect a little bit on the older shit. Um oh, the how older long shit. how long you been rapping like in general? Rapping? Okay, I did ass. I'm gonna tell y'all this story. The way I started rapping, no bullshit. My parents was getting drunk one day. Not my parents, my, my dad, my pops, and my stepmom. They was getting drunk, and I was all in their face. Like, you know how the older folks be drinking and smoking and shit, and you just a little badass kid want to be in everybody's face? And my stepmom and dad ass was like, bro, get the fuck out of our face. Like, go write a rap or something. Like, go make a song. I'm like, 10, 11 years old. So I dead ass took that shit to heart. I went upstairs. This one you still in Detroit? Yeah, I'm still in Detroit. Like this was like jit jit days, way before I came to like. But this was before I really started taking, way before I really started taking shit serious. This is just how I actually got introduced to that shit. I went, made a little whole little song, took it to my pops. My dad at the time was already rapping and putting like all his little like, you ever wanna look, look, look the nigga up, just look up, go dumb boys, like GDB or like the Street Lords, G Rock, K D Z, like they some really some old Detroit legends. Not too much too many niggas out there and ain't really gonna know about them unless you really from the city, but shit, that's how I went. I went and showed my pops the song, rapped, I rapped them to him, gave him, showed him the beat and shit, and like a week later that nigga took me to the studio and I laid that shit down. First song I ever made. But when I came to Atlanta, Really just on some bore shit with Candy and B Hunter back in B Hunter Garage, like fucking 
ninth, tenth grade. This was like five, six years ago. Just you talking about platinum up. producer be hunter? Yeah, platinum producer be hunter before anybody was anything like in the garage with the nets, smacking nets and shit, trying to record niggas sneaking and smoking and lighting incense so his mom wouldn't smell the shit like. Back then, <laughs> we was on the bullshit. The jit shit. Yes, the, the badass jit shit, no cap. Okay, okay. So, when you came to Atlanta, though, how how you even, like, meet Candy Paint? Or, like, now what people know who is Candy Paint and Be Hunter flexing? How did how did that even happen? I met Be Hunter. The first time I ever seen the nigga Be Hunter, it was, like, I was in middle school. I was, like, this was, like, the first year I moved out. I was probably, like, 12 or 13 at a basketball tournament. Me and Be Hunter used to hoop. I'm at an AAU tournament, and I see the nigga. And I hoop, I think we hooped against each other or some shit. And then a couple months go by, I turn around, go to summer league for school. I go to summer league for school. This nigga is there. I'm like, damn, I done seen this nigga at AAU try I done seen this nigga at AAU tournament. Then I turn around, this nigga about to play. We about to play together now at the same school. So I ain't even know this same nigga. Same high school. school. Yeah, same high school. And then come to find out, whole time I'm seeing this nigga at AAU tournaments and shit. My older brother has them. All them niggas two years, two three years older than me. Like when I came into school, they was already juniors, damn near seniors. Him and Hash was already like this. So when we started hooping together, he realized like, damn, that's Hash, little brother. We really got close as fuck. And then Candy, same shit. School, going to school with them niggas, and just ended up. What high school did y'all go to anyway? Oh, New Manchester. New Manchester. New Manchester High School. So. Do you feel like like that shit happened on purpose? Like yeah, you I feel, feel like, like that you shit, was that shit was meant to be, no cap. That shit was destined. Like we was all on the like we was all just on the same shit. Like everybody was on the same page. Like nobody wanted to go to school. We wanted to skip school every day and go in Brandon garage and record every day after school. Shit, we on the same mission. Fuck it, we finna go punch up some pizza. That's what that used to be our thing, bro. I swear to God, we had to get some pieces on some. Young nigga shit, get some pieces, order pizza for the whole crib, the whole gang. We had probably six, seven of us, order a bunch of pizza, and just have a long ass session. Like, trying to make a bunch of beats, we had make four, five, six songs. Like, we just really always be, everybody used to always be on the same page, so we just click from the jump. And this before, like, I guess the internet watching and shit. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think was like the first shit? Um, I don't know, I wouldn't say to caught your attention, but you think that people start paying attention to Spad? To me? Okay. The first shit, the first shit that ever got me like a little bit of buzz, like around high school and shit, I ain't gonna lie. It's a bullshit ass song. Y'all know that Cardi beat? That I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud um, of him. I got a song with K, it's me, Candy, and y'all know him as DJ Lav, but... Lav used to rap. His name used to be Lavish Leap. That shit's still on my SoundCloud. Y'all go look that shit up right now. I think I dropped that shit back in high school. That shit probably did like 50K in like two weeks. So like, And back then... Oh, yeah. What was you going to say? So, like, when you drop shit in high school, though, because it's like, you know, in high school, it's everybody's kids or whatever. So how was, like, I guess your peers, like, niggas in high school was listening to your shit? How did that go? It was really like the niggas... The niggas I felt like should have fucked with the shit was on some hating ass shit. Like, nah, this nigga ass. Like, or some niggas felt like I wasn't about the shit. Because niggas don't really know my background. Because I'm not from Atlanta. So Nick, some niggas would be like, nah, he not about that shit. He talking about he don't really be woo -woo -woo, this, that, and the third. But to me, I really didn't give a fuck. Because I ain't got nothing to prove. None of y'all niggas. When I go back home, I can go check in. Like, I don't got to speak on too much or say too much or nothing. Niggas know who my peoples is, like, niggas really tied in, so I, I wasn't worried about none of that shit, but it was like, I got love from the lame motherfuckers and the weirdos and shit like that, but the real niggas just hated on me for some reason, and I do not know why. It was, no, I, I can't. So the tour, talk about that a little bit, what's the tour in September, because I'm gonna be in Paris, like, my, I don't even think my viewers know this now, I'm really just announcing this, oh, yeah, but I'm gonna be in Paris, so. Gone. That's why we had to I didn't even know y'all was going to do a tour. Yeah, that's why we're doing this shit right now on this, this quick shit, but we got to get it. So, oh, yeah, the Rager, I'm going to be missing this shit. The Rager Kids, the Rager City Kids tour. Um, me, Candy Paint, Cito, Hunchos, Cash Bentley. We're going to 20 different cities. We're going all over Texas. We're going to New York. We're going to a couple places in the West Coast. 
course we gotta hit Atlanta. A couple places in Florida. Shit, really, we just about to, we just put our own little tour together, like put the pieces that we know, got a couple of venues and shit. Oh yeah, Quincy, DJs, Quincy, DJ Marbaby, DJ Rav, all my niggas. It's all game. Everybody's all game. Everybody gonna be there. We're going to fuck up. Promise. That's what's up. I think that's gonna be a really fire ass tour with the lineup, cause um. Oh yeah, and we got a special guest too, but I can't, even, I can't even announce it. And you can't even do it for Shark. I can't even announce it. I can let Shark know, but I can't <laughs> let Shark TV know. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, um, shit, man. I want to talk about um. I don't even know what I want to talk about. We could really start with um Atlanta. A lot of people um, ask, I get a lot of comments about this shit in Atlanta, and it's a lot of artists from all over the world that, because Atlanta's really got that spotlight on it, and Atlanta, why do you think that is, and Atlanta's why do you think like, we've had it for so long? Shit, to me, Atlanta today is the new age New York. Like, if you think about it, back in the day, 10, 15, it was, that's how New York was, like, Jay-Z, all them niggas from New York, yeah. same way, like, Thug, Lucci, fucking... Baby, gun, like, it's, it's the same situation. Like, I feel like every once in a while, it's just going to switch up. Just like my city now is just finally starting to get on. Like, niggas like Baby Smooth, T Grizzly, fucking Snap Dog. Like, niggas, like, niggas, just everywhere. Like, I feel like every once in a while, it's just going to switch up. Like, but I feel like basically, bro, I could go back to the nigga Lil John and Usher, Goody Mob, fucking. Um, so, it, yeah, and then at the same I time. I feel like yeah. they had this shit on lock since, like, they done already 2000. Been, yeah, they done already been had it on lock in the 2000s and it just rose because shit. It's a good market out here for the music and shit though. It's studios everywhere like I can't even, I honestly can't. That's a that's a hard question. I can't say why Atlanta got the spotlight, but when you out here it's like it, it makes sense. The the scenery and shit like it's perfect. All the strippers and all that shit like it's perfect. It's a definitely a good city to for the limelight. like in the music for sure for sure and then on another note why do you think it because new york is really the birthplace of hip-hop yeah, why that's do you what think they can't get the throne back because to my recollection the last nigga that really had new york on lock was 50 cent and that shit got killed probably around 08 yeah wayne so and cool. kanye do the wayne and kanye um 50 kind of just went into his his businessman shit but from What's that point Jay-Z on who would you say was the next artist to pop out of um, like New York to like really, you know, get that that heat? Snitching ass six nine, pussy ass nigga. You think so? Cause I was gonna say Rocky. ASAP. Oh yeah. Fuck, I was gonna say Rocky. Fuck, fuck, fuck. And I listened to this nigga. I did that ASAP. For sure ASAP. My nigga ASAP. But six nine was going dumb. Like that nigga was going fucking retarded at one point in time. It was like. I wasn't fucking with the music too much, but it was like you can't de- you can't deny a nigga when he having success. Like that's one thing I ain't gonna never not. Even if I don't fuck with it, I'm a I'm, that's one thing about me. I'm gonna keep it real with you. I'm not fucking with your music, but you're going crazy, nigga. You're going stupid. You're going viral. You got fans, niggas is fucking with you. I personally won't listen to it, but congratulations. But now I ain't even no fucking congratulations because he's a snitch. Okay, because that was the crazy part for me. Because if I look back at 2017. Um, when I had met Trip and I had heard Poles, that was my first time seeing Six Nine. Mm-hmm. But this is still before like that was my first time seeing him too. This is Poles still shit. before like Trippy really popped. So my first time hearing this shit, bro, I thought that nigga was like one of the trashest niggas I've Terrible, ever heard. Bro. Bro. Like, I never would have expected him to do what he did. And the internet is really crazy for that shit. Well, not really crazy because Gummo, I can't. It was an undeniable hit. Gummo was hard. Gummo was straight. Gummo was hard, but. Before that, like, I just, I didn't see it. I didn't see it at all. And um, fast forward to now, like, damn near two years later, we in August right now. Next month, this nigga finna get on the stand. How the fuck you in the streets and on the stand you a witness? <laughs> this nigga finna start pointing fingers on the stands, bro. Like, I'm really waiting for next month. I think that's what's gonna be bro, I'm scared crazy. And I wanna see what, what the people do. Because when, when he does get out, how do you think uh, the industry going to react to that or hey, people I and fans? I personally feel like me knowing 
what I know and watching how niggas move and watching what happened to niggas when they come home from snitching, bro, that nigga either gonna have to run or get his ass whacked. Like, I don't, bro, and then you, you game banging, you around real, you really telling on real, real bloods and real niggas that's really tied in, like, bro, you not. You not finna be good nowhere. Like you think you just gonna walk around New York again? Walk around where is he? What part of New York is he from? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Like nigga think he's just gonna be able to walk up the street in Brooklyn like like it's just like it's all good again? Fuck no. Niggas gonna be on your ass. Like if it's one thing I know the streets don't play about, bro. Nigga, streets do not tolerate, bro. It's just a snitch. See, cause if I was him, I think if I was him, I had to get on that stand. I gotta stand up. And I point at this nigga. He the one who did it. That nigga kidnapped me. If I was him, I'm taking my ass out the country. I, I gotta leave. He gonna either have to run or he gonna get his ass wet. Like, there is no, like, he's gonna have to live a whole new life. Like, he might as well get them face tats and shit removed, covered up, or whatever the fuck he gonna do. Because nigga gonna be on his ass. Because if the nigga move overseas, they still gonna be calling this bitch ass a snitch. The whole world knows six nine is snitch. snitch. I, I don't I don't know. I can't really speak on that one. I don't know because he did have a European, European um, fan base. He blew up over there first. True, and then and they I don't even know how different token, their they culture probably, is. From yeah, they ours. probably don't even look at shit the way we do. Like like when it comes to shit like that, so he might be smooth, but. I don't know. I ain't never saying I ain't gonna doubt a nigga shit. A comeback is always possible, but I just I'm not supporting no comeback for the snitch. I can't even see it happening. But I'm not gonna ever doubt a nigga and say you can't do shit because anything can fucking happen. 